First things first, we've got a null launcher, a launcher completely focused on security, which sounds incredibly boring, I know, but wait till you can see what it can do. So first of all, just by swiping to the left, you open a private application section. So this part of your home screen, as well as all the applications inside of it, can only be accessed by you, who knows the pattern. Unfortunately, as of now, the launcher doesn't support fingerprint, but hopefully that will come in a future update. Now, a bit of a spin-off of this, and probably my favorite feature of the launcher, is the share phone functionality. So say, for example, you're gonna pass your phone to a friend, a stranger, a child, so that they can use some apps on your device, you can select the apps that you're allowing them to use, and they will not be able to do anything else. It creates a separate home screen just for this guest user, and the only way they can access the rest of it is by entering the pattern. And by this same mechanism, you can also use the pattern to prevent people doing any number of things with your device, for example, moving applications or uninstalling them. In terms of customization, a null launcher is slightly on the bare bones side. It's got very basic functionality in this aspect and no support for external icon packs. One thing I did find quite useful though is that a simple swipe up from the home screen brings up a small control center like pop up. So as a bit of a side note, you might know we're on the long road to 1 million subscribers on this channel. So if you are enjoying this video, if you could hit that subscribe button, it doesn't cost anything, it would mean so much to me. Now the next one is Flick Launcher, which has a very similar feel to Google's own Pixel Launcher, which for most people is a good thing, but it has a few extra features. Built into the launcher, you can lock any number of your apps with your fingerprint, which in a similar vein to what Anol does, means nobody, when you give them your phone, can access your stuff. Now, as you may be able to guess from the name Flick, this launcher is heavily reliant on gestures, which I know some people love and some people hate. But the implementation here is rather good. So for example, I've programmed it to open my torch every time I swipe down, Google Assistant every time I swipe up, and probably my favorite is the double tap on screen just to lock it. The launcher is quite a nice fusion between the stock minimalism of Google's own and something far more customizable like Nova Launcher. And even though it's quite heavy in terms of what you can do with it, in terms of the resources it uses, it's a fairly efficient app. App. Number three, we have Computer Launcher, and this is full on Windows on your smartphone. And I'm not talking Windows Mobile here, I'm talking something that feels like Windows 10. Literally every single feature of Android has been crammed into something that genuinely feels like using Windows. Also, it's quite user friendly. Everything has been scaled down to make sense on a smaller phone's display. Now, given this is such a departure from a stock Android launcher, it is a little bit heavier on the phone's resources. We've got a grid layout on the desktop so you can more easily arrange your icons. We've got a little recent apps tab which helps you multitask right from the home screen. And a nice touch here is the little toggles. So they even look as they would on your Windows laptop. And from there you can adjust the phone's main settings. Rolling in at number four, we've got the Thing Launcher a rather bizarre name for what is otherwise quite a practical and well thought out application. It allows you to create agents, which are essentially automized commands implementing Spotify, Uber, Philips Hue, amongst some other applications, as well as all your standard Android settings. You could type in 20, 30, 50 chains of command in there, and it'll just keep them in the background until any one of them is activated. We've got a categorical app drawer, which when you install the launcher, it'll automatically sort your apps into what category it thinks they're in. And to be honest, for the most part, it does a pretty good job. So another thing the company is super proud of are their contextual favorite apps. So instead of just showing you your recent applications, there is a constantly refreshing stream of apps on your home screen based on what you're doing and what it thinks you're gonna do next. Right, so now we have the Nokia Z Launcher, a super clean home screen, which is really meant for the minimalists among you. Combine this with a nice, subtle and dark background, and you've got a beautiful setup almost instantly. We've got quite a neat, if not slightly boring, alphabetical app drawer, but on the main page is where the fun really starts. Because this thing wants you to get to every single setting, contact and application on your phone by writing on screen. So when you're on the main page by default, it'll show your recent applications or contacts, and then you just start drawing away. And whilst from an outside perspective, it's gonna sound like it takes absolutely forever to get to your apps, but it makes a lot of sense because within two or three letters, whatever you wanted to search for is almost definitely being shown on screen. And just on the left-hand side, we've got a page for your widgets. It supports all the standard widgets, which is a nice little touch. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. As I said earlier, it would mean so much to me if you could subscribe to the channel. With that being said, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.